Hi. Um, I'm Lisa Cardi, and this is Alison Harding, and um, we both work at the um, Library and Archives at the Natural History Museum. And um, the Natural History Museum is a member of the Biodiversity Heritage Library, or BHL, um, which is an online resource, and that's um, kind of the focus of our talk. So very brief, is an overview of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to very quickly um, tell you a little bit more about the Library and Archives collections, what we have there. Um, then I'm going to hand over to Hall Alison, who's going to talk a little bit more about the about BHL, um, some facts and figures about the structure. And then Alison's going to talk about um, the library side digital tools that we use at the museum to get our content into, into um, BHL. And then I'm going to finish up by looking at some of the end user tools and services that are available to allow um, people to get content back out of BHL in, in, the, in the way that they want to use it. And then there'll be time for questions at the end. Um, but can I just uh, introduce a little disclaimer? Um, the presentation we're going to talk about um, was originally submitted by Jane Smith from the um, Library and Archives at the Natural History Museum, but Jane's got another commitment today. Um, so Alice and I have stepped in. So if you do ask any questions that we can't answer here and now, apologies in advance, and we will take those away with us and come back to you with an answer as soon as we can track Jane down. Okay then, right, but very briefly, so the Natural History Museum's Library and Archives collections it maintains the world's finest collections of natural history, literature, artwork, and um, manuscripts. And there's some figures there about um, how that breaks down. So there's lots of unique content, um, things like um, specimen registers and also um, field notes, um, largely in the archives. But there's also a lot of published material as well, books and journals. And it's the published material, the books and journals, that we've mainly been focusing on when it comes to adding um, content to BHL. Um, so BHL is um, an open access digital library of taxonomic publishers which are providing a signal, single point of access for the professional and citizen scientists alike. Um, and it goes back to 2005 when there was a meeting held at the Natural History Museum called Library and Laboratory the marriage of research data and taxonomic literature. And uh, the thing about taxonomic literature is that it, is, it can <coughs> last longer than other literature. In other words, you can go back to the 15th, 16th century to find your original material. And because of this, it tends to be geographically um, spread. Um, so the mood at the time was that scanning costs were becoming reasonable and um, a kind of cooperation came into being. And in 2006, BHL was formed a consortium of 10 natural history libraries. Um, so we have just reached the 10th um, anniversary this year. Um, and it, the 10 uh, member the libraries has now morphed into 16 members. You can see the list of people. It's mostly American, but we've got Australia, Mexico, there's ourselves and two from this country. Um, and we also have affiliates, and the difference is the kind of level of membership. Members uh, pay more to be members, and they have greater access to data and decision making and all that kind of thing. There are also um, a large number of other um, content providers. Now, they, they are not members or affiliates, but their content is absorbed into the system. I think the statistics are impressive. Over the 10 years, we have now more than 50 million pages which we have taken into BHL. These are mostly out of copyright uh, materials, um, but we also have almost 500 in copyright titles which have been ingested with the permission of the license holder, and this is an area where we are hoping to um, expand our database. The Natural History Museum itself in over the 10 years has now taken in almost 4 million pages of our uh, material. Um, and this is over 1,000 titles and nearly 8,000 volumes. Um, the graphs at the bottom just cover the last uh, four years. You see our data, the amount of material we're taking in is increasing. Um, the 2016 data is obviously only up to September this year. 
Um, the only thing that's really going down is fold outs, and that's because one of the reasons is we're, digit we're digitizing less older material, so the modern material doesn't have so much as going to fold down in the larger uh, format pages. Um, I just want to talk about how we get our data into uh, the uh, CHL. Um, so we, uh, basically, it's best to start off with the, the library catalogue with some decent records, which is able to output mark, mark XML. We need some way of getting the data, uh, the metadata together, so we use Excel or OpenOffice Calc. We have an editing dashboard, we have a manual upload system, and we have an issue tracking system. Software. Um, so the images are scanned by an internet archive unit we have in the museum using their scribe setup, which is a uh, it has a book cradle and a couple of cameras which which digitise the pages of the book. Um, the images are loaded to the internet archive as JPEG 2000 files, and then we need to match our metadata with the images before they can be loaded. So for each volume that we load, we need title metadata. Now the title metadata comes from our library catalog using the data visualization uh, fetch. Um, and in order to match that with the images, we provide the scanning studio with a spreadsheet. The, uh, there's an, um, a unique identifier for each title, which is what draws the data from the catalog. We also have to give them the item level metadata. So this is most important for serial records. So you're, you're, you have one title, but you have multiple um, uh, items going in there. And we have a set there are uh, standards for how we uh, describe titles. And then the once the, t the material is in BHL, each page needs some metadata, and that tends to be input by the Internet Archive um, technicians. So they will add page numbers, plate numbers, whether it's text or an illustration, where the, you know, if it's the cover, that's interesting. Um, once the material is in there, if everything's gone to plan, then it should just be correctly in BHL. So things don't always go to plan, maybe the metadata isn't quite correct for the title. Maybe there are other reasons why we have to edit it. Things like um, if there are two partners scanning the same serial, um, there may be two records in there, or we need to merge records and unpublish the duplicate. So we have this um, dashboard which we use. It also provides us with statistics and lists of material that we have all loaded. Um, the material is loaded weekly, so we can check each week what's gone up there. We can look at it and make sure that it's, it's, it's all correct and that doesn't leave, hopefully, anything to be incorrect. Um, there's some of our material, particularly large folio books or very delicate material that we cannot put through the Internet Archive Scanning Unit. They are a kind of mass scanning uh, situation, whereas we sometimes have to take special care. So there is an online system developed by the BHL called McCall, and that does basically the same thing. We scan our material, but we have to load the bit metadata separately from the Internet Archive. So um, you have to down, we have to download uh, Mark XML records from the catalog, load it up, and add our own page level data, which actually is um, extremely time consuming. So we don't do very much of that. Um, and then just as a last uh, thing, we have the issue tracking system. What happens is that a lot of our users will request material or they will tell us that something is wrong um, and uh, you know, similar things. And then we uh, are able to go in there. We can tell them once that their item has been scanned. We can go in and see what the, the corrections are needed. And that's when we go back, do the corrections, and hopefully everybody is happy. move on now to the tools that end users can um, use to get content out of um, BHL. And I just thought I'd set the scene or let Charles Darwin um, set the scene by sort of um, illustrating why it's so important that people can get 
um, material out of BHL. And natural history literature comes um, in all kinds of formats. Um, and there's um, the main um, types up there. Um, and um, all of these um, different um, formats are essential for studying life on Earth. Um, they allow scientists to understand how species might have changed over time and also understand how one species um, can be different in a different um, geographical um, zone. Unfortunately, um, historically, most of this literature has been only available to a very select number of libraries and largely um, all of those um, are in the developed world. Um, and this lack of access to literature um, forms a major obstacle um, to the efficiency and progress of scientific research and it's what's known um, in natural sciences as a taxonomic, in, or as the taxonomic impediment. Fortunately, um, BHL um, is changing all of this by providing open and free um, um, online access to um, library collections around the world. But it's not just about the access. Um, very importantly, um, BHL is also developing tools that allow end users to extra extract the data out of BHL and manipulate it and repurpose it um, however they um, want to. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of highlight a few of the main sort of tools and services that are available for BHL users. Um, so starting with API and data exports, um, BHL metadata can be freely exported um, through a variety of different APIs that are available um, for developers at, um, at the BHL website. And also there's a number of different data export options as well. And metadata also includes scientific names, which of course for natural scientists is extremely important. Um, another tool, um, reference management tools, it's possible to um, export citations into Mendeley and also to download in um, fib text and also EndNote format. Um, BHL work with DOR, uh, with um, uh, um, reference manager, uh, no, um, DOI assignments so that um, people can cite and track um, content and it stays, um, has permanence to it as well. Um, it's possible to either uh, download as PDFs entire um, volumes or um, to customise those PDFs so that you only kind of take along particular um, parts of um, a volume, which of course if you're working in the field and you've got limited um, storage capacity is very important. Article indexing, so that um, not just titles of journals and books are indexed, but also the whole content so that people can search everything out. Um, it's possible to submit a scanning request to BHL so that you can ask for a particular um, book um, or journal to be um, digitised and made available. And also recently implemented are, um, are altmetrics badges so that people can track online citations um, using, um, using um, the altmetrics tab. Um, those are all kind of quite standard um, tools. I would expect that most sort of um, half-decent um, collection of digitised content would um, make available to users. But the last one I want to talk about is taxonomic name searching. This is um, the last graphic there. And um, so BHL uses something called Global Names Recognition and Discovery. Um, it's a taxonomic name um, recognition algorithm which allows um, people to find a taxonomic um, name in one <coughs> part of um, digitised content in BHL and then just use that to link to the same um, taxonomic name in any other um, digitised content within BHL. And I've got a screenshot, didn't dare doing a live demonstration either. Um, so you can see up there um, some of the social media tools that I talked about earlier, and also there's some of the download options which hopefully you can see um, um, to illustrate how people can get data out of BHL. But here on the left hand, sorry, this is a, this is a digitised book um, from BHL. On the left hand side here, um, there are all the um, species names of all the um, animals that you can see on that page there. And if you just click on one of those, it takes you to the species bibliography where you can either um, search within the same volume and jump to um, a, um, a page which also contains that um, species name, or you can jump to any other volume that's been digitised and is available in BHL. And that's what would have happened if you'd carried on clicking on uh, that particular species. It takes you to another um, content. Um, there are also um, a number of science, citizen science opportunities with BHL. 
There are two browser games, Schmorball and Beanstalk, um, where um, you can play a game, and, and as part of the game, um, BHL captures um, data um, about um, whatever the person's looking at at the time, which is then fed into OCR, and then obviously that content is um, finally ends up being searchable in BHL. Um, also, um, another um, project is Science Gossip. Um, that's um, uh, a project that's available on Zooniverse, the citizen science um, platform. And what happens at this particular portal is it includes images from the 19th century, and people tag those images, and obviously that um, data is captured in BHL, and again, it forms a, a data set that people can search on. And um, BHL's um, collections also include handwritten scientists' um, field notes and um, volunteers. There's a, um, a transcribing um, project also running so that people can transcribe those handwritten notes and these transcriptions are then uploaded to BHL, forming yet another data set again, which is downloadable and searchable by BHL. And uh, just finishing up there with a um, quote from an apologist uh, talking about how um, useful uh, he or she um, finds um, BHL. That's everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.